Hey, what's up everyone? So I'm finding myself making one more video about Xbox 360 storage. About two weeks ago, the developer of the Fat Explorer tool released an update that allows it to set up internal SATA SSDs so they can be used in an unmodified retail Xbox 360s. So for anyone interested in optimizing game storage on the system without modifying the console itself, this is something to consider. Now I've made a few videos in the past that compared performance between the Xbox 360's internal hard drive, a USB hard drive, and a USB SSD. There are links in the video description if you'd like to check those out. The reason a SATA SSD is interesting is that it gets all the benefits of an SSD over the Xbox 360's internal SATA port, which is faster than the Xbox's USB 2 ports. So in this video, I'll walk you through how I set up an SSD for use in my system, and then I'll show performance comparisons between my official internal hard drive and the new SSD. Now first thing, any sort of video guide can go out of date, and the developer of the tool continues to update and maintain it. So if this is something you'd like to do for yourself, be sure to read the details on the Fat Explorer website for limitations before trying this. The SSD I'll be using is the Lexar NS100, which is one of the drives the Fat Explorer recommends. For setup, I connected the drive directly to my Windows 11 PC via a free SATA port on my PC's motherboard. You'll need to download a few files from the Fat Explorer website, and you may also need to install the latest version of the .NET runtime as well. Download and unzip the latest version of Fat Explorer somewhere on your PC. Now since we're going to go through all this effort, I also recommend setting up the drive so it can play original Xbox games via backwards compatibility. For that, we'll also need to download the original emulator files, which are also found on the Fat Explorer website. Now additionally, I paid for a license to use Fat Explorer's SSD Maker feature. As I'm recording this video, the tool offers two license options. One is for full access to all the features in Fat Explorer, and the smaller cost lets you use the SSD Maker feature, which is all you'll need to set up an SSD. Buying a license gives you a key that you should save somewhere safe. You'll need to paste this into the license activation dialog in Fat Explorer to activate it. Okay, now before we go through the process of setting up the drive, we'll need to prepare the original Xbox backwards compatibility files. We'll start by unzipping the package, and I just extracted it into the Fat Explorer folder. After extracting the backwards compatibility files, we need to place them into the correct folder structure so they can be later copied onto the SSD during formatting. It'll make more sense when we get there, but let's get it all ready now. So what I did is create another folder called stage compat files. Inside this folder, we'll need to create two additional folders. One is for the content partition, and the second is for the backwards compatibility partition. Now we'll need to move or copy the backwards compatibility files we extracted a few steps earlier into the right locations within these folders. These locations can be found within the readme file that is included with the back compat data. So first, I'll copy the compatibility folder. This is the folder itself, not just the files within them, and I'll paste them into the back compatibility partition folder that I created. So that part is ready. Next, we'll need to create the correct folder tree under the content partition folder. For this, I'm referring to the readme file. First, we'll need to create a folder called content and under that will be a folder with all zeros, and so on, matching what's in the readme file. All right, now that the folders are created, we'll go back to where we extracted the backwards compatibility files and open up the April 2018 title update folder. Inside this folder is a single file. We'll need to move or copy this file into the folder structure we just created. So right at the last nested folder is where I'll paste the file. Okay, so now prep is done and we're ready to start the process by launching Fat Explorer. Here's where we'll start the SSD maker feature and I'll pick my new Lexar drive from the list. After selecting the correct drive, and be extra sure you've picked the right one here, we'll click Backup and Flash. You'll be prompted to save an undo file, and I highly recommend you keep this somewhere safe. This process will replace the firmware on the SSD with custom firmware. If you ever want to revert it back to stock, you'll need that undo file. All right, with the files saved, Fat Explorer will flash the drive. Flashing is complete, so we can continue with formatting the drive. 
When the format dialog is shown, we can see that my Lexar drive no longer shows up like it did originally. This is because the new firmware causes it to report as a Hitachi hard drive, which was one of the hard drives the Xbox 360 used. So we'll go ahead and choose that drive for formatting. We'll hit next, and the next step should show that the security sector is valid in green. So far so good, and we can hit next again. In this step, I included the extended and auxiliary partitions in the format by double clicking on them. These are technically optional, and my understanding is the Xbox will also create them during a system update if needed, but I went ahead and included them now. I took the default settings for both partitions. The last two partitions are the backwards compatibility partition and the content partition. These should be green and included by default, so we can hit next. Now we can give a name to the drive. This is what we'll show on the Xbox 360, and you could also name it there. I'm just going to name it SSD and then continue. Okay, so this next step is where we need to specify those backwards compatibility files that we staged earlier. I'm going to click the drop down here and first choose the backwards compatibility partition. With that selected, we can browse for folder and point it to the folder we created earlier. After selecting the folder and before moving forward, double check the folder path shown here. The partition folder itself should be the last one in the path. Great, next we'll use the drop down again to select the content partition. Then we'll do the same thing browsing for our content partition staging folder. Again, before moving forward, double check the folder path shown by the tool. The content partition folder should be the last one in the path. All right, with both folders chosen, we can again double check everything in the final step and then complete the format. Great, we are now done with the tool, so we can power off the PC, disconnect the SATA drive, and take it to the Xbox 360. I'm putting this SSD into my Xbox 360S, and for that, I'm having a friend help me out by 3D printing a case so it will fit properly into the drive bay. In the short term, I did insert the drive without a case, though that's not something I'd recommend as a permanent solution. Once I do get that case, and if it works out, I'll drop a link in the video description if you'd like to check it out for yourself. And if a 3D printed case isn't an option for you, you could also consider purchasing an empty drive shell instead. With the drive inserted, and with my Xbox 360 connected to the internet, I powered it up. After boot, it asked me to apply an update, which I accepted. After that, we're at the dashboard and ready to load some content. Checking the storage settings, you can see that a new drive appears here, and to the Xbox, it looks like a hard drive. That's exactly what we want to see. Alright, now let's get to the side-by-side -side performance comparisons. The SATA hard drive I'm using is an official Microsoft 320GB hard drive that I used in all of my previous tests. In all of the tests, I'll be loading a game save from the same storage device as the game itself. There will be no external storage devices connected to the console. Now my Xbox does have a little bit of onboard flash storage, but we won't be using that either. Let's start with Assassin's Creed 4. The timers start as soon as the UI begins to fade. As loading finishes, the screen fades to black, and I'll stop the timers on that first fading frame. You? Do you have a minute? I'm on my way upstairs. IDJ wanted to talk with us about putting together a trailer using some of the footage you... Next is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. The timers start on the first frame of the loading screen. Third is Deus Ex Human Revolution, which I've used in past tests. The timer starts when the loading dialog begins to show. When loading finishes, the game requires that a button be pressed to continue. I'll be stopping the timers as soon as that button prompt is shown. Next, let's try Doom 3 BFG Edition. When I press the button to begin loading, the screen begins to fade to black. The menu is already pretty dark, making it hard to synchronize that fade, so I'll be starting the timers on the first frame of the loading screen.
Fable 3 will be the next test. Loading begins as soon as the storage device is chosen, so I'll start the timers when I make that choice and stop them on the first black frame as the game world begins to fade in. Next let's try Grand Theft Auto 4. Now on launch, GTA 4 will load directly into the last save. So what we're looking at here is the first frame of the Rockstar logo that is shown as the game starts up. I'll start the timers on this frame and stop them on the first frame of the game environment. Halo 4 is next. The timers start as soon as I hit resume campaign, and I'll stop them on the first frame of the game world fade in. What were those things? Some sort of advanced defense AIs. Related to the Sentinels, I'm guessing. Next, let's go with Hardcore Uprising. When I tested this on a USB SSD, it took a very long time to load. Let's see what happens this time. When loading finishes, I'll need to hit a button to proceed to the level. I'll stop the timer as soon as that button prompt appears. Next, let's try Mass Effect 3. When I hit the button, there will be a small loading indicator on the bottom right of the screen that shows for a couple frames before the loading screen itself is shown. I'll start the timers as soon as that indicator is shown, and I'll stop them on the first frame of fading in the game environment. All right, next let's go with Mirror's Edge. The timer starts on the first frame of the loading screen and will stop on the first all white frame as the level begins to show. Head toward the building with the big stupid dog. Sleeping Dogs is next. The timers will start when the button prompts on the bottom of the screen disappear, and they will stop when the loading screen is no longer shown. Finally, let's wrap up the test with Skyrim. The timers start as the UI begins to fade, and they will stop in the first all black frame as the game world fades in.
So there we have it. It's probably no surprise that the SATA SSD is faster than the SATA hard drive, but what might be most interesting is just how much or how little different games benefit from it. This setup takes more effort than just plugging in a USB drive into the console, so it may not be for everyone. If you'd like to see performance comparisons between USB storage devices as well as the internal hard drive, check out the video shown here in the end card. Thanks for watching the video and take care.